What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Robert and today I am reviewing a product that we don't see very often. Not anything that you will see um, reviewed very much. It's not a mainline club, but it is this. The standalone putter. Of course it falls down when I do that. Now we've had a couple of months of super heavy winds super strong winds out here in Dallas. We're talking gusts of 35, gusts of 40 miles an hour. And it's been really hard to do a review with this. Today has actually been one of the calmer days. So despite it falling down, let's go hit some putts, see how it performs. And then let's go talk about it and see if this is something you could consider buying. S7K putter and the standalone technology that it has in it. So how they're able to do this is they do a really um, heavy head, so the head weighs a lot, and then they go very lightweight in the shaft and in the grip. Now the first thing you'll notice when you pick this club up is the grip is almost like a foam. It's not quite styrofoam because it's a little bit softer than that. But it's a really soft foam, like there's no, almost like a pool noodle is how, is how I would describe it. It's not the best feeling grip in the world, it's actually kind of slick, um, but it's super lightweight and that really is going to help it stand up. Next up you notice the shaft, to be honest, it could be a graphite shaft, but really it almost feels like plastic to me. It is a standard 35 inches. It feels pretty good in, in your hand. Um, the shaft is perfectly fine. It actually looks kind of good. These graphics uh, look pretty good. It's got the standalone here. It's got the weight. I really actually kind of like the way the putter, uh, the grip, and the shaft kind of look on it. And then the final thing you notice, what's nice is I don't have to really hold this thing up, is the head shape. The head shape is kind of a mixture between, it's almost um, an Odyssey number seven, not quite as long on the fangs. It combined with, I would almost say, uh, an, an Anzer wide body. You know how Odyssey has the one W that is that wide body. It kind of reminds me a lot of that. Now, in terms of alignment aids, it's got three lines on it. The three lines help. Um, actually, when I went and got fit for my Adele, the three lines was the way for me to go. So I actually kind of like it. And then these little grooves here can also help with alignment as well. Another weird thing about this putter is you'll actually notice the way the head is. There's actually a little bit of... A uh, little, little bit of... The, the shaft is behind the head of the club, actually. Uh, you don't see that with any putters, really. Um, you really want those lined up, squared away. So it's very rare that you see, you see this right here. All right, so the bottom of the club actually looks pretty cool as well. I really like this font and this color scheme, this kind of turquoise, uh, hot blue color that they got going on here. 400 grams. And one of the things about it uh, that I'm going to talk about here in a minute when I talk about performance is how high the MOI is on this thing. It's got the brand name down here. It's got kind of their logo on there. The back of the club's really nice looking as well, the S7K logo. Um, overall, I think the club's fit and finish, you know, while it's not a Scotty Cameron or a Bettinardi or, or a Toulon, it is... Pretty nice for 179 bucks, 199 bucks, wherever you find it. Um, the face is a nice fly milled face. You can actually see the nice milling on that thing. 
when I set it down and uh, give it give it a nice little give it a little focus there. You can actually see that's a pretty good looking looking club head there. About the looks of the club, let's actually kind of talk about how it feels. Um, you know, it's a solid build face, so you expect a little bit of firmness with it. Uh, there's no insert that's going to help soften that soften that strike, but I kind of prefer a, sol uh, a milled face like this, something that's a little bit firmer. The problem I have with it is, one, the grip feels terrible, right? Um, you can actually, it's really easy to kind of get it to slip and slide out of your hands. Um, and then when you make contact, whether it's perfect or not, it's very tingy, so it makes a very loud ting noise when you hit it. And then the vibration in your hands are so bad because this is so lightweight, it doesn't really reduce any of the vibrations, so it's very, very firm. Now, if you're somebody who likes a firm feeling putter, this may be the one for you, but as somebody who prefers something a little bit on the firmer side, this was probably a little too firm for me. There was nothing that I could do, even hitting it out of here, out of the, uh, out of the middle, that really made me like the way this club felt. At no point did I go, yeah, I absolutely got that one perfect, felt great, felt like a, a knife through warm butter, so uh, or a warm knife through butter. So, um, yeah, the feel wasn't great. Um, the sound wasn't very good either. And since those two things are so correlated, you know, um, it doesn't really get a passing grade for me on feel, but let's talk about performance. Feel and sound really don't matter if the thing performs, right? We want everything to feel good and we want it to sound good, but if it's draining putts, who really cares? So the first thing we need to talk about is the very obvious standalone aspect of this putter. Now, I think it's pretty cool, especially if you're somebody who's gonna struggle with alignment issues. I think it's a very great opportunity for you to set the putter down, go behind, make sure you're actually aimed where you are trying to hit it. Um, and that's really nice. The problem is this putter is super lightweight and if the wind kicks up even a little bit, it's gonna fall as you saw out there. It's a cool idea and I think if you live in a place that it doesn't, uh, where the wind doesn't blow as hard as it does here in Texas, it may be a good idea. When I lived in Houston, uh, it may work for me, right? It, the wind doesn't blow as much down there, um, unless a hurricane's coming through. But um, yeah, it, 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 it's very much a gimmick. It's cool if you get to use it. Um, but I've, for the last two months, I've been trying to film doing this, but all I can do is get the putter to stand by itself for about 10 seconds because the wind's just coming over, knocking it right over. So I think it's a pretty cool idea. I just don't know that it's a very useful gimmick that they have. Now, in terms of making putts, um, the alignment wasn't too bad. It was cool when it did work and I could go behind it. It felt terrible, but on miss hits, the ball kept rolling. The one thing I noticed about this putter is no matter where I hit it, the ball, I, it's hard to explain, the putter face felt very hot. So it felt like the ball was rocketing off the putter face and then it would just keep going. I don't know if that was a pure roll or if it was just the sound of it really felt hard so it, everything felt like it was coming out kind of hot. I'm not sure what it was, but every putt I hit felt like it was going super fast. Um, like the, it was just launching really fast off of it. Um, in terms of forgiveness, this thing was super stable. If I hit it off the toe, I mean, you can see here, it, it moves, but I gotta hit it pretty hard, right? And I'm really not even holding it here. If I hold it like I am uh, holding the putter, I mean, that's that's pretty little. I hit it here. I mean, you can see, that's not gonna move very much. I hit it in the back, it's gonna move just a little bit, right? Hit it in the middle, everything goes straight back. It's actually a pretty good performing putter. Now, for $199, do I think you could probably go to a used section and get an old, uh, a pre-owned ping? Probably. Do I think you could get a pre-owned TaylorMade? Well, I'm not the biggest fan of TaylorMade putters. I think you could get a Spider for $199 if you go to a pre-owned section in a, uh, in a uh, golf shop. So it performed pretty well, but I don't know if it performed $199 well. So final thoughts on it. Overall, it performs all right. I don't like the way it sounds. I don't like the way it feels. The standalone gimmick is cool. 
I think it works if you are somebody who doesn't live in a very windy place. But if the wind's gusting even 20 miles an hour, this thing's going over. Um, and that's just kind of how it goes. Everything on it is super lightweight. It's very head heavy, which gives it that maximum MOI. But the slightest little bump is going to knock it over, right? The, look, it, it's knocking it out of alignment. It may not have knocked it over, but I mean, if I do this, you can see how much that thing's turning, right? And that's just a little tiny bit. Little tiny bit, and it's knocked over. Imagine a big old gust of wind. So, I mean, we're about to get a gust, and you can see it's moving right now. So, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's well worth, I, I think it could be worth $199. I'd rather see you go to a PGA Superstore, get a pre-owned Odyssey, get a pre-owned Ping, get a pre-owned uh, TaylorMade, stick a new grip on it for the $179, $199. I'm not a big fan of this, like, kind of onset here. Um, but the head shape, as crazy as this sounds, I love this head shape. I'd put a steel shaft in this with a regular grip and at least stick it out and uh, roll some putts with it. I mean, it's all right. I don't know. If you can get it pre-owned for about 100 bucks, I think it's pretty nice. I actually came across this in a, uh, like a Play It Again sports type store. It's actually called Replay Sports Gear here in Dallas. That's where I came across it, and I paid $10 for it. I think it's well worth 10 bucks. I don't think it's worth 200 bucks. All right, so that's the review of the S7K putter. Um, like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Um, leave comments below. Have you hit the S7K? Have you been wanting to try it? Let me know down below. Like the video. Dislike the video. If you, uh, if you don't like this video, hit the dislike button. That gives me some critical information as well. Follow me on all your social medias on Twitter. I am at the Green Fee One on Instagram. I am at the Green Fee. And if you search the Green Fee on Facebook, you will find me there as well. I look forward to talking to you. Have a great day. Hit up straight.